It is Wednesday, my dudes, and it's also Valentine's Day. So happy Valentine's Day, everyone. Now, I was expecting when I woke up to be talking about Miracle Made Kingdom in the sense that all of the promo artwork and the teaser trailers and everything made us kind of believe that this version of Tamarin that's here on your screen, the focal point of this piece of artwork, was going to be either a new skin or a new character. And she's apparently neither. So the Valentine's event that is got Tamarin front and center doesn't have anything for Tamarin. No skin, no new character. Then what was the point of this redesign? Right? Why why even waste the time making up this uh this new ensemble for Tamarin? If it's not going to be accessible by the player base like at all. It just feels like such a huge missed opportunity. To have your Valentine's event kind of reach the pinnacle of hype last week with the new character Laia. And then have nothing on Valentine's Day. That's a pretty big swing and a miss, no? Right? Again, especially for a side story with this much behind it. Normally, a side story comes out and you just read it. And maybe there's a new character and that's that, right? This is a new side story with a bunch of... New artwork, uh, a, a PV, a teaser trailer, a maid cafe being brought out in South Korea, and new tracks, new music tracks, right? A lot went in to this side story. And to see it stumble at the finish line like this is pretty disappointing, right? And I'm not saying it's either the majority or the minority, but there's a very vocal group right now that are kind of dissatisfied with the state of things. And this is just another thing that you can kind of throw on that pile, right? So I could already tell you that if I scroll down at the end of this to the stove comments, there's definitely going to be some people uh, who are not very pleased with the fact that this patch doesn't really culminate in the way that I think a lot of us were. So yeah, no Tamarin, big missed opportunity. So instead for the rest of the video, let's take a look at Two things that are kind of important, which are the new exclusive equipments as well as the return of the custom group summons. So, Bihu and Elagos, two characters that I think are definitely viable right now, but could use a little bit of a tweak or adjustment, are receiving these. So, good picks for these characters. Bihu, I think, is already on the rise. So, this exclusive equipment is definitely going to make him, I think, be a much more prominent character in PvP. I am... Personally, going to be building Bihu very, very soon and start messing around with him because I think he is quite good, especially after this new exclusive equipment, which is Willful Bells of Sanctity. Gives 16% effectiveness. Great for a burn-based character. Gives him a little bit of reach on certain knights or soul weavers if you're not really quite there, if you're just missing some stats. Flamekeeper is the first one here. Gives extra attack and defense percentage. Again, great if you're missing stats, if you're having a hard time hitting thresholds or just in general, if you already have the thresholds. Might as well get some more damage and bulk out of the character. I think this one's actually pretty good. Second one here gives an attack buff on Symphony of Radiance, which is already his setup skill, his support skill. And attack buff massively amplifies the detonate on his burn. So yeah, really, really good change here. Uh, this, is, I think, is probably going to be overall the best one. But this third one is still also pretty good. Symphony of Radiance giving a burn to all enemies for one turn. Uh, you can't cash it in right away. So if they have a cleanser, that's kind of a miss. So I can see why people might not want to use this one. But it's still damage on an otherwise non-damaging move. So that could also potentially, again, be very, very good. This exclusive equipment is better than like 90% of the exclusive equipments that I see that we get in the game. Like all three of these options, if you told me you played it, I wouldn't really fault you. Because I think that all three of them are quite good. And I think that the base statistic is very synergistic with the character. Now let's move on to Elagos, which is a tap percentage as his main one here for Boss's Coat. <clears throat> yeah, um, I wish this was something else. Like if this was a critical hit chance, I think it would probably be a bit better. There's no way they would give this character speed. The character's already crazy fast to begin with. So yeah, we were never getting speed. So critical hit chance, I think, is a bit better than attack percentage. But sure, I'll take attack percentage. So first one is on the S1, gives 15% CR. Not really the best. And I'll jump down here to the third one, Cloak and Trigger. Decreases the cooldown of Cloak and Trigger by one turn. 
also not really the best, especially when you consider where Elagos has actually played. He's played in very aggressive compositions or cleave comps that are trying to wrap the game up in a hurry. So an extra 15% to turn cycle is probably not going to matter because you probably already won the game by the time you're getting to the point where point blank shot is realistic. Cloak and trigger, you're only going to get one off in a match, even with the reduced cooldown. Now this one here on the cleaner, the passive skill, at the start of the first battle, grants stealth to the caster for one turn. Well, everyone plays Elagos on Guiding Light. He needs Guiding Light to function. Having Guiding Light built into your exclusive equipment is very, very good. Um, it basically, it frees up the artifact slot, and it also is helpful to newer players that want to play a Ranger or a Contester that don't have Guiding Light because it's a limited artifact, right? So having this right here is very, very big for this character. And I expect people who play Elagos They'll develop some new technology. They'll start to mess around with some other options for artifact choice. Um, what those might be, not sure. Maybe it's like symbol of unity to synergize with the hit set. I'm not somebody who plays a lot of rangers, so I'm not really sure as to what I would actually want to play on the character to increase his damage or give him some kind of flexibility. But anytime you see this, right, an exclusive equipment replacing or freeing up something that previously was... A dependency for the character is pretty big so this is uh definitely a good change for the character and will it increase his playability i'm not sure but it could only be a good thing right the character is already seeing some play not a ton some play this could definitely help things but of the two be who definitely feels like he is the winner and now for the rest of the video i'm going to talk about the custom group summon and the reason it's going to be a little bit truncated here is because I already talked about the custom group summon three months ago. And if you take a look at the requirements here, when you scroll down, you can see it's limited heroes released in the past six months and were featured in a rerun. And for everyone else, it's just, have you been released six months ago? And surprisingly, there hasn't been too many releases, it feels like, in the last six months, right? Like you've got the three limiteds, Laia, who's up now, Biblis. Blooming Lydica, none of those are going to be on it. But, like, what else have we really had? Fumir? Kane? Right? There's probably someone else I'm missing. You can let me know down in the comments below. But the list hasn't really changed too much. Like, not too many additions have been added. And if you want to see my, like, full breakdown on everything from the last time, I'll leave the link to the November custom group summons in this video's description. Um, but for right now, I'm going to just quickly swap on over here to my tier list here. This is pretty much how I feel right now. This is slanted more towards World Arena, but there's still some other stuff in here that I'll touch upon, right? Do keep in mind that a character's artifact that accompanies it does affect the placement. So you get to pick three characters, right? You get their character plus their accompanying artifact. So to give you an example in this top tier category... Charlotte is not a character that I would recommend pulling for the character, but her featured artifact when you choose Charlotte as one of your three options on a custom group summon is Elbrus Ritual Sword, which is one of the most important artifacts in the entire game. You can never have enough Elbrus Ritual Swords. It's kind of the backbone of the knight class outside of Arius. Like Arius and Elbrus Ritual Sword, those are the two artifacts that kind of drive the entire class. So you kind of need a lot of those, right? So here's our categories, goaded artifacts. So you're basically choosing these characters for their artifacts and their artifacts alone. And their artifacts are super impactful. You need a ton of copies of them, right? That is why they are up here. This is for veteran players. If you're not sure what characters to take veterans, you have pretty much the entire cast. This is probably what the short list I would look at. If you're a newer player, limited heroes, I would always recommend that you take limited heroes that you don't have because if they get a rework or a buff at some point and you don't have them, well, you're going to feel pretty bad. So make sure you pick up these characters. They also have limited artifacts as well, which is a, you know, a bonus. Uh, characters you should own. This is largely slanted towards PvP, specifically World Arena, but there are some obviously staple PvE units in this category. Whale artifacts. This is basically characters that have very very good artifacts like the artifacts that would be up here under goaded artifacts but the thing is unlike these ones where having one copy at like plus 15 or having multiple copies at plus 15 is probably fine not the best but probably fine these are ones where the characters like the artifact that accompanies it you need it at plus 30 for it to really shine so these are the ones where like if you're going to be somebody who is a 
Heavy spender, you're going to dedicate a lot of bookmarks. These are the ones you're going to be looking at. Playables are characters that are usable somewhere in some capacity. Only if nothing else is pretty self-explanatory. Like you pick up these characters because you don't own them. But for the most part, they're not very good. And then already free means you should never take these characters unless you just really need their accompanying artifact. Because as it says here, they're already free. So let's just quickly run down some of the highlights for you. Uh, Abigail is for Golden Rose, which continues to be one of the best DPS artifacts for warriors in the game. Cerise is here because it's a limited unit with the limited artifact Guiding Light, which Guiding Light is the staple artifact on Rangers. Most Rangers are just not viable without the artifact. You can never have enough Guiding Lights. I have like five or so, and even then, sometimes I feel like I need more. So, yeah, Cerise, pretty much Cerise is going to, I think, for most players, going to always be one of your three options on the custom group summons. Until they figure out how to change Rangers so that Guiding Light is not the only thing that makes them viable, you need it, right? It's just, it's that important. Like, Cerise is my number one overall. Uh, and if I haven't already mentioned it, these are not by tiers. They are alphabetical. You can see B, B, D, E, H, right? I. So all the characters are alphabetized. Charlotte, as I already used in the example, it's for Elbrus Ritual Sword. Makes the class, the knight class, pretty much that in Arius. Ravi has Sigurd Scythe. I think she's the lowest value of these four. Sigurd Scythe is a staple artifact for damage dealing warriors. Uh, Golden Rose sometimes is better. Uh, a decent chunk of the viable warriors in the game. Would prefer to have Golden Rose, but Sigurd Scythe is still really good for characters like Martial Artist Ken, for your Red Robbies if she ever gets a buff. Uh, coincidentally, she's the featured character that has Sigurd Scythe. And then like Lone Crash and Bologna, those characters would rather have Sigurds than Golden Rose. Um, and even though I think it's a half step below Golden Rose, it's still really important. It's still one of the most important artifacts to have for PvP. Limited Heroes, uh, Dien. It's just going to always be a solid PvE, PvP character. Not as good in PvP now, but still fairly decent in PvE. Uh, Unfading Memories is an okay artifact if you have a bunch of copies of it. Fairy Tale Tenebria, kind of good as a fifth pick in World Arena if you can, you know, you've got good speed gear and you're confident in trapping your opponent into her. Her recommended artifact is Fairy Tale for a Nightmare. And that's obviously used to be something that used to be up in goaded artifacts in the previous tier list, but. I feel like there are less good viable users for it right now. So I moved it down. Like if I could, if I could put her in the halfway point, I probably would because that artifact is still great. It's just a bit harder to use. Holiday Euphine, um, good versus anti-cleave. Her recommended artifact or her accompanying artifact, I should say, is decent as well for characters like Conqueror Lilius. Uh, Green Landy, great for PvE. Sometimes viable in PvP if you have really good speed gear. It needs Guiding Light. Her artifact that she comes with, not exactly the best. The girl Luna, really popular character, uh, can definitely get there for some pieces of content, like Expeditions, for example. Uh, she's at least got some home there. Uh, I just used her last night on stream before, uh, you know, was it like February 13th, right? I just used her to cleave somebody. So she's got some really niche uses. But uh, the primary reason you're picking her up is Draco Plate. Well, still one of the best artifacts for warriors in the game. Not as good as Golden Rose or Sigurd Scythe, but still pretty good. Seaside Bologna, I would probably pass on unless you just don't have the character. Because, well, I feel like there's a lot of replacements for Prop Boy kind of proved that you could use Ari instead of Seaside Bologna for Wyvern. So, uh, SSB, still decent, but not exactly the best. And then her accompanying artifact is also really good for her. Summer Break Charlotte, primarily a cleaver. And then her artifact uh, is Mature Sunglasses, which is good for knights, just not as good as Arius or Elbrus Ritual Sword. Summertime Assariot, pretty much a cleaver. You have to be a dedicated person to want to play her. Like it's kind of like a specialist kind of character. And her accompanying artifact is uh, really good for not only her, but Car Pirate Captain Flan. If you want to play Pirate Captain Flan, make sure you pick this character. Let's talk about characters you should own now. Bihu, obviously we just talked about him getting the EE. I think he's got a lot of value in this format. He's very good against a lot of the damage dealers that are played and is a fairly decent bridge. Brig is a PvE all-star, and my boy Hinojin absolutely crushes with him, even in PvP. I think he's less of a PvP person. That's more just Hino's skill and just how good he is at getting the character to work. But this is a necessary character, I think, if you are a PvE enthusiast. Destina, great everywhere. Elena, amazing, amazing character right now in PvP. She's super, super good against Briar, which is Saria, and a lot of cleave compositions after her buff. Great, great character. And then her accompanying artifact is also really good for characters like Rowana. Hua Young, I think, is kind of back. She's very, very good against Laia. And Laia, I think, is probably the best character in PvP right now as I'm recording this. So Hua Young is going to be one of those, like, staple characters 
I think to deal with Lyak compositions if they're not going full on aggro slash cleave. Uh, she's just very, very good. Like this is a character after her buffs that is much stronger than I think people gave her credit. Isaria, staple PVE unit with arguably the best PVE artifact in the game in Song of Stars. So of course, great pickup. Lilius, great everywhere. Hall of Trials, PVE content in general. Great versus Lua, who's the next character we're going to be talking about. And fairly solid compositions for like Guild War defense with like Sanya and stuff. She's just great all-rounder character everywhere. Like she's not super broken or like top tier at anything, but you'd be surprised at how many spots in the game you can play Lilia. So uh, I would be remiss to not have her under characters you should own considering her wide applications of uses. Even Nightmare Raid, for example, she's like best in slot. Uh, Lua, broken character, even with Laia as like a hard counter now, still a broken character. So I'm not going to not advocate for a broken character, right? Politus, pretty much staple PvP unit if you're like a cleaver. Yes, Abyssal has kind of made her take a bit of a backseat, but I'd be remiss to not give you an option where uh, Politus might always make a resurgence at any time. The kit's just good in general in a lot of scenarios. Like, again, not top tier like she's been over the years, but it still feels like somewhat of an evergreen kit right just this plus abyssal or this plus book is going to always be a really really uh, strong composition to someone's team composition ran probably the best cleave opener in the game just mr speed does everything uh company artifact not as good but still very good character rowana staple unit pretty much everywhere when she's good she's borderline broken tamarin best pve character in the game whale artifacts Celine for obviously the spirit i uh not spirit i uh storm 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 sword oh man i can't speak storm sword is uh really good yes it's good on her and spirit eye Selene. so if you want to play one of the Selene's, you need a storm sword it's really really important it makes the character actually work you need plus 24 or higher crow great in guild wars not so great everywhere else but he comes with holy sacrifice which is a staple for certain characters and certain compositions most notably abyssal euphine uses the holy sacrifice artifact so if you want to play her that's probably where you're going to end up needing to pick up the artifact Elbrus is another viable option for her as well. Sanya is pretty much not playable without her artifact at like plus 30 ideally. So, well, if you want to play Sanya, might as well just pick Sanya. Get dupes for not only uh, now, but potentially the limited version of Sanya that's going to be coming out in the future. So a lot of value on Sanya this time around if you want to pick her up. Now for playables, I'm not going to go into why you'd want to pick one over the other. Um, I'm just going to give you just, again, quick rundown of everybody. Alencia, not particularly the greatest right now. Main reason to pick her would be for actually her artifact because it's good for Kane for Rift. Arya, a lot less frequent usage in World Arena. Pretty good in Guild Wars offense though. Arunka, good in Guild Wars offense. Basar, you're primarily picking because you want the artifact Abyssal Crown. Cecilia, primarily for expeditions. Chloe, for not only her artifact for certain characters, but for Banshee. If you're in a hyper late game player, I should add. It's a one-shot only kind of character. Shu. Decent in Nightmare Raid. Her artifact, Snow Crystal, has a lot of niche applications. Command Model Lyca for either Kades or for World Arena. Eligos for Cleaving and World Arena. Flan for Cleaving and World Arena. Kawaric, if you are just somebody who has really cracked out gear and you want to try somebody who's very high risk, high reward in PvP. Kron for Anti-Cleave. Ken for PvE content, specifically Ancient Inheritance. Kisei, if you are just looking for a decent bridge style damage dealer around the 250 to 260 speed threshold. Mort has some really funky niche applications to counter certain characters. I personally play him on Crown of Glory on Lifesteal versus AoE characters in PvP. Very niche. Uh, definitely not the best, but definitely not the worst. Pavel for Banshee or Cleavers. Para for speed contesting for slower players. Sharoon for uh, anti-buff characters or just uh, HP scaling bruisers in general. Tenebria for Abyss. Tywin for anti-control strategies in World Arena. Vildred for his speed imprint or his ability to farm PvE content. Violet for his PvE applications as well as his anti-blue nature in PvP. Euphine for her ability to cleave. More likely you're going to be picking her though for her uh, accompanying artifact. Merciless Glutton, which is one of the best single target DPS artifacts in the game. Especially if you don't have Benny Maru's Tachi. Yulha, just rock solid tank in PvP. Company artifacts kind of garbage. Zahak, nightmare raid usage, as well as anti dodge tech in World Arena. And then that pretty much covers, I guess, everybody here that's on the list. I'm not going to really touch on the only, if nothing else, because I don't really think that there's a great reason to choose anyone that's on this lower list here. I mean, I guess you could argue, like, maybe, I don't know, 
or Volin for double edge decrescent. But so few people use double edge decrescent that it's kind of hard to really recommend. And the rest of these, there's, I think, just either comparable or better options elsewhere, right? For the most part, where they just have low value like Volin on, who's like only good for red expos. And his accompanying artifact is pretty bad. So unless you're just trying to min max that one expedition, not really a ton of value. So there you go. That's the quick down and dirty on the custom group summon that's going to be coming out tomorrow after maintenance. Hopefully this was super helpful to you. If you're watching this on the day that it airs on Valentine's Day, I will be doing more fun husbando slash waifu tier listing activities tonight over on my Twitch at twitch.tv forward slash I am underscore TSU. There will be a giveaway during that stream. Smogate was kind enough to hook me up with some Skystone giveaway coupons for you. I'll give away uh, some sky stones to two lucky viewers tonight. So make sure you stop by. It'll be around 7 p.m. EST, 4 p.m. PST. Hopefully I'll see you there and hopefully you enjoy the rest of your day, the rest of your week, and I'll catch you in the next one. Later.